Bonjour. Could I have a baguette, please? There is a huge difference between having a bad sound like this. This is a really absolutely terrible sound. An average sound like this, definitely uh, getting better. Or a really good sound like this. Oh, this is so good. I love this sound. This video will explain how to get from this sound. Still terrible. Nope. No. To this sound. Definitely the best of the world. In only 220 bucks. This might not be an amount of money you can spend, however, I think it's a pretty good quality to price ratio uh, that you can find on the internet. Uh, if you find a better deal than that, please let me know by posting a comment below. So first, the microphone. There are two types of microphones that are usually used by professionals. There are dynamic uh, microphones and condenser microphones. The dynamic microphones are very sturdy and are less subject to distortion uh, because it supports more sound environments uh, like if you want to play your bass or the guitar or if you want to sing all these situations will be supported by a dynamic uh, microphone however condenser microphones have the benefits of uh, being more precise and the fidelity and the quality of your recordings are thus enhanced however they are more fragile so it's a microphone that you want to keep uh, usually at home or not move too much around which is actually perfect for uh, YouTube videos for example if you're doing them from home or uh, video streamings the con with a good microphone is that it can be very sensitive so you have to set very precisely the volume and the gain of your microphone in order to have a good recording the rule of thumb is the more gain you use, the more sensitive your microphone will be and the less gain you use, the less sensitive it will be. This leads to two different options when you're doing your recordings. First, use a very small gain, but then you'll have to keep your microphone very close. The other problem in this configuration is that people will see less of your face if you're recording your face at the same time. The other option, which is the one that I use, is to put your microphone further away and use a higher gain. However, in this case, you capture more background noise, so you need a software to actually cancel that noise before it's sent to the video. It's up to you to choose which option fits you the best. In this video, I'll cover the second option, which is keeping your microphone a little further away. Choosing your microphone will require you some time because different microphones have different bass sounds and I encourage you uh, to read reviews on the internet to know which one uh, fits your needs. I personally chose uh, the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB for two reasons. First, it has a great sound, as you can hear right now, but also it is connected in USB. A lot of microphones use XLR connectors, which is pretty standard in the audio universe, uh, but they have the disadvantage that you can't connect them directly to a computer, which will require you to use an external hardware in order to do that. Don't get me wrong, both are really good, so it will be up to you to choose which one fits your needs. The second thing you want to have is a pop filter, which will remove all very loud p, f, and s from your recording. Otherwise, it sounds like that and it's not very pleasing to the ear. I personally chose the Wintech PopGuard 2000 because it looks really good on my microphone, as you can see right there. Now that you have your microphone and your pop filter, it's time to configure it on Windows, and this is going to be the hard and complicated part. As I said at the beginning of this video, you want to equalize your sound. Unfortunately, most microphone drivers do not allow you to do this, and even worse, they do not allow you to do any kind of noise cancellation on your sound. This means that you need to use a software that will do this equalizing and this filtering for you. Unfortunately, Windows does not make this process easy. Indeed, your microphone shows in your recording devices by default, but if you use your microphone in a software that equalizes and filters your sound, the output of the software will not show up as a recording device, which means you won't be able to select it in your recording software. In order to fix this problem, we're going to trick Windows a little bit. We'll use a piece of software that connects a playback device to a recording device, which means that any sound seen on the playback device will actually be routed to the recording device. 
The two softwares that I use are Reaper, which does the equalization and the filtering of my sound, and Virtual Audio Cable, which adds this connected playback and recording device to Windows. So how to configure everything? Well, bear with me, it's going to be a few steps until we get there, but we'll get there eventually. The first thing you want to do is install Virtual Audio Cable. You can download it from the website that I'll link below. Warning, you might have to reboot your computer. The next step is to install Reaper, uh, which is available on their website. There is a demo that you can actually try for 60 days. Once Virtual Audio Cable is installed, check your playback devices. In there, you should have a new device named Cable Input. Check its properties and make sure the level is set to zero, otherwise you will hear any kind of sound that is sent to this playback device. On the recording devices, you should have an equivalent device which is called Cable Output. Check its properties and set its level to 100 to make sure that any sound that is sent to the playback device here is actually played at 100% volume on the recording device. You can also see that my normal microphone, the AT2020 USB, shows up here. However, in my recording software, I never select it directly, but instead I select my cable output to make sure that the sound that I'm using is the one going through the software and not the sound directly output by the microphone. Talking about the microphone itself, you should set its level so that it never clips, which means that this bar should never fill up entirely. Example, if I shout in my microphone, it never completely fills up. As you can see, my level is set to 70, but it will vary depending on the microphone that you have. The next step is to configure Reaper. The first time you launch it, it will ask you to select a device, press yes. Leave the audio system to wave out. Your input device should be your microphone, in my case the AT2020 USB+, and your output device should be your virtual audio cable, in this case the cable input. There is a very important configuration on this page which is the buffers configuration. The higher these values are, the less likely your sound will jitter when you're recording, however, the latency will be high. If your latency is high, there will be a difference between the moment people see you talking and the moment they hear you, which is pretty bad, so you want to minimize this latency as much as you can. The goal is to find the sweet spot where your sound does not jitter and your latency is as low as possible. I personally use values of 8 by 192 samples to have a latency of 34 milliseconds which is almost not noticeable on stream. You might have to use different values, just try them out and see what works for you. When this is done, you're done configuring the base settings of Reaper. A slight note though, as long as this window is opened, Reaper will not output any sound to the output device that you've set here, so make sure to press OK before you do any kind of testing. Now we need to insert a track in Reaper in order to process the sound of our microphone. In order to do that, you go in the track menu, insert new track. Then you need to enable the track by clicking on this red button and you should see the microphone input right there in the yellow bars. At the bottom of the screen you can see the mixer with the track you just added. You can also see the master track, which is what Reaper sends to the output device you configured earlier. As you can see, Reaper does not send anything to the output device. In order to fix this, right click the red button and select monitor input. Now Reaper actually sends a signal to the output device. Now that this is done, you can finally configure your effects on your sound. To do that, you just go to the FX button at the top of the screen, click that and add some FX to your track. Here are the effects that I'm currently using for my own streams. The first filter that I use is a noise gate. The role of a noise gate is to completely shut down your microphone when there's no sound going through it. If you don't do that, you always have some noise when you're recording anything, even when you're not using your microphone. The settings that I'm using are 300 milliseconds for the release, 
which make the gate activate only 300 milliseconds after any sound has stopped, so it doesn't cut the microphone a little bit too early. I also use a low pass of 6000 Hz, which means that any sound of which the frequency is higher than 6000 will not deactivate the gate, which means the gate will still be on and the microphone will still be shut down. I also use a high pass of 150 Hz, which means that any sound of which the frequency is lower than 150 Hz will not deactivate the sound gate. This basically ignores any sound that is not in the human voice range. It's either very high sounds or very low sounds that you cannot do with your normal voice. Finally, the most important setting is the dB at which you want to deactivate your noise gate. Basically, you want to set it right below the volume of your voice when you're whispering. In my specific case, I found out that it was minus 38 dB. As you can see, you can still hear me. The next effect you need is a noise cancellation effect. This is useful if you're not recording in a perfectly soundproof room, which is probably the case. The name of the effect is Reefer. It basically removes a certain wave profile from any sound that goes through your microphone. Usually, you use the wave profile of the normal background noise in the room where you're recording. Let me show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do is deactivate the two filters we just added, and then simply record your microphone without saying anything. In order to do that, you press the big red button at the bottom of the screen. Record approximately 30 seconds of background noise. When you do that, do not say anything, do not touch anything. It needs to be as silent as possible. Now that you have recorded your background noise, we can use it to configure Reefer. First, disarm the microphone recording by clicking on the red button so that it does not interfere when building the noise profile. Go back in your FX and activate Reefer specifically. Now select the Subtract mode. When you select this mode, you'll notice a new checkbox, Automatically Build Noise Profile. In order to use that, simply play the background noise that you just recorded and then click this checkbox. Do that for 30 seconds and your reefer will be basically configured. When the configuration is done, remember to uncheck the checkbox and rearm the microphone recording by clicking on the red button again. You've just configured Reefer. You can now re-enable Regate and add the next filter, which is a compressor called Reacomp. The goal of a compressor is to dynamically reduce the volume of your microphone when it detects a very, very loud noise. It works this way. When a certain amount of dB is reached, it starts to reduce the sound dynamically looking at parameters you've set on the screen. I would recommend you to start with a stock setting which is called Modern Vocal that you can find in this list. This is the one that I use, and on the right side of this window, you can see that the compressor is active when I speak really loud. As you can see, the red bars on the right is the amount of volume that is actually reduced from the normal input of the microphone, so it doesn't destroy your ears. The next effect is the one that you're gonna like the most, and it's an equalizer which is called Re-A-EQ. The goal of the equalizer in our case is to boost the bass and the highs of the voice so it sounds really radio-like. To give you an example, this is my voice without an equalizer. Test, test, one, two, three, it doesn't sound as good. But with the equalizer, it does sound a lot better. There is no perfect setting for the equalizer. It really depends on your voice and what you're trying to achieve. As a reference, these are the settings I'm using for my own stream. I boost the bass at around 175 Hertz by an amount of 10 dBs. I also use a bandwidth of 0.01 to make sure to not boost any other sound than the bass. Finally, I do something very similar for the highs, which I boost by 9 dBs, and I also use a bandwidth of 0.01.
The last effect that I'm using is a volume adjustment because the output of Reaper is a little lower than I want it to be. The volume adjustment effect has two benefits. The first is that it will boost your signal by a certain amount, but it will also make sure that your maximum volume will not go over a certain limit, which here I actually set to minus 0 0.1. This means that my sound will technically never clip for my users, even if it can clip before that inside Reaper. And that's it. You've got Reaper configured. You've got virtual audio cable configured. The only thing that remains is to change the input in your recording softwares from your normal microphone to your cable output. The benefit of using the system is that all your softwares are actually going to use the same sound, which is the one produced by Reaper. However, you will always have to run Reaper when you want to use your microphone. As a last minute advice, I can't recommend you enough to use a Teleboo microphone stand and an anti-vibration microphone clip holder. This will allow your microphone to not capture the vibrations of your desk when you're streaming or hitting your keyboard when you're angry, for example. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, please consider leaving a like or a comment below. As a reminder, I'm streaming every Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific time. I'll see you around. Bye.